welcome. Good morning, everyone. Our dignitaries have been seated in their rightful place. I want to welcome you to Innisfil Community Church. We are so glad that you've chosen to be with us today on this very, very special occasion. This has never happened before, so we're all pretty excited. We have a lot of uh, amazing things to happen. We hope that you just enjoy, worship with us. We got Caleb here. We've got the whole bit. We've got some old faces, new faces. We're just so happy you're with us. So if you would remain standing and uh, worship with us, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. What a privilege it is to be here this morning. Uh, for those of you who uh, are here and know my dad, I am his oldest son. And. <laughs> And his youngest son is on the drums, just, uh, <laughs> but you don't need to clap. <laughs> and it's a, what a, an honor it is to gather together with uh, the people of God this morning. And we've come, yes, uh, in a special moment at a special time for a, a pastoral transition today and to honor those who have gone before and to bless those who are taking the, the baton. But I'd like to recognize who we're really here for, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the psalmist put it so wonderfully, and I'm going to read from Psalm 100 before we sing and before we worship. And I hope we do have a wonderful moment in worship with the Lord today. It says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And give thanks to his name and praise his name. For the Lord is good. <laughs> And his love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Please put your hands together.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can the church say hallelujah this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a good God. He is faithful. We've invited him here, and, and we believe that he is here among us. So glad we serve a God who is God with us, and that he has given us his Holy Spirit who is God in us this morning. Thank you, Lord. Well, uh, you may be seated for just a moment. I'll ask you to stand in a minute. But I've been asked to just introduce uh, the worship team. There's been some thought that's gone into the people who are involved this morning. And, and many of you here may have been involved in the worship team at some time or in ministry. And, uh, you know, God bless you. There's a few that are playing this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll go from the sound at the back. So imagine that we're scientists this morning. And you've taken a sample of soil. You know how they dig the core down and they get core samples? This morning, the worship team is like a core sample of the worship team over the generations that this church has been here. And so we have the different times and different people from different places. And, uh, and so I'm just going to go through them one at a time. So uh, we'll start with uh, Matt McDonald, who's doing lyrics from 2012 to present, Horace Huntley doing sound, who's been here from 2012 to present. Anthony Langevelt, who's on sound, from 1984 to present. Darren Jackson, who's doing the live stream from 1993 to present. Uh, Tanya Firth, behind me on vocals, is 2014 to present. Patricia Jackson on vocals, behind me, 1994 to present. Rose Brown, from 2015 to present. And then we get into the lower stratus. <laughs> These are not dinosaurs. <laughs> But we've got uh, Brian Warner on the trombone over here, who was in a youth group. When my dad was a youth pastor, he was in the youth group at, I believe, Highway Church, and his dad became part, uh, Brian's dad became part of the original board of this church. And Brian grew up in this church, and uh, he tells me that my dad mentored him in ministry he became a full-time pastor, and he drove this morning three hours from his church in Godrich, Ontario, for 7.15 here this morning to play trombone. <laughs> Thank you, Brian, and, and the rest of you that I've already mentioned for being here. Bonnie Pereira on the piano from 1991 to 2015. Craig. <laughs> Craig Rideout on the keyboard, who is here beginning in 2008 to present and led worship and continues to uh, from time to time. Thank you, Craig. And uh, Doug Hopkins, uh, who again came from when this church was planted from Highway Church in Barrie, came here and has played bass in this church from the time it was planted until uh, 2008. So Doug is playing the bass here this morning. Uh, Gideon Courtney is on the drums, and uh, he always argues that he's been here the longest, but uh, he, he was born in 1982 in this, well, near this church. <laughs> Not in this church, thank the good, good Lord for that. Uh, and he's still here playing the drums many years later, so thanks, Gideon. Uh, Chad Stuckless here from 1988, so 2012 was playing electric guitar, and uh, thank you, Chad. And, uh, and myself, I was uh, in this church since I was born, and uh, uh, that would be 1980. So when the church was being, when the meeting in a, a school and in a house, I was a part of those meetings. I don't remember it very well <laughs> at all, but uh, I certainly remember this, uh, this church and, and have been involved over the years. So that's just a brief introduction uh, because I was asked to introduce, but uh, know that we are all a part of the family of God this morning, and it's just a pleasure to be able to worship together. And worship team, it's a pleasure to be able to worship together with you. And so thank you for being a part of it. Would you please stand with us as we continue to worship? Hopefully you can put your hands together again.
I will say. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If this is your testimony this morning, and the Lord's been faithful to you, can you just lift your hand and wave it as a testimony to him this morning? Take a look around, church. The Lord has been faithful to his people. Lord, we give you thanks this morning. We sing, all my life you have been faithful. All my life, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the good.
Oh, can we give the Lord a clap offering this morning? Praise you, Jesus. He's worthy. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank you. Let us just continue to praise the Lord. Father God, you are so good. Father, Thank you for uh, being here amongst us today while we celebrate something just so amazing. Father, thank you for your presence. Jesus, be with us through this whole ceremony, Lord. Hear the hearts of your people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'd like to invite Marlene to come. She's going to have a few words, and then we're going to watch a bit of a video that was put together. Good? Good morning. Um, my name is Marlene Meyer. And I attend Innocent Community Church. I have known the pastor for a very long time <laughs> and wanted to share some thoughts that I wrote down. And I titled it as, How Lucky and Blessed Am I? Tell me, who has had a youth pastor and continues to be your, your pastor in your early 60s? Who trains you for a deeper walk with Jesus? to show you how to serve with love and compassion, who gives the constant message, Jesus loves you and wants to know you in a personal way, who inspires you to walk deeper, higher, stronger. Pastor's last message, I got the card, <laughs> um, was to continue to run the race. We had the take home card and we were to nourish our relationships with Jesus, to read the word daily, to take time in your life to pray, to stay closely connected to the body of believers and church, and to continue to tithe and obey and giving. Who inspires you to walk deeper, higher, stronger, and wiser? I was in grade nine when I started to attend Highway Church Youth Group, and Guess who was my inspirational pastor? Thank you so much. We had autograph books in those times that we would get people to sign, and I asked Pastor Howard um, to sign mine. It was a small five by seven orange, and he wrote in it, to run the race, Hebrews 12, two, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. He encouraged us in nursing homes, leading services, and to really get to know people. He encouraged us in our inter-Christian uh, school fellowship. At school, he encouraged us to sing, to lead in plays, and youth services. He was equipping us, not only for the present, but for the future. Today, I wanna share about two paths. One path, his path, the shepherd, Pastor Howard. Life brings many experiences. This is true of our pastor. I've seen him experience, I'm not gonna cry, good times and not so good times, but always remaining faithful to Jesus. I've seen the pastor get married. I've seen the pastor grieve. I've seen him in pain. I've seen him rejoicing and living day by day and always putting his best foot forward and being so inspiring. Then I saw him married, get married again I've seen his faithfulness to Jesus, and I've seen the faithfulness of God on him and his family. The other path is mine, the second path, the parishioner, Marlene. My pastor saw me when I lost my father in my 20s. He saw me grieving. He saw me in pain. He saw me thrive, and has seen me in a terrible, depressed state. He has seen me move forward and thrive again. He has seen the hand of God in my family. My pastor married us, married one of my children. My pastor baptized me, then Dan, then our children. My pastor dedicated our children to the, to the Lord and my granddaughter. My pastor did funerals for my parents, one in 1988 and then in 2022. He prayed for my daughter and her husband during their loss to their baby in 2021, who is blessed. We thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for changing your vacation in 1988 
to support my family and myself for the first time of many. Thank you, Pastor Courtney. Thank you, the Courtney family, for many sacrifices you've made. I personally thank you. Thank you so much. I thank God for the race my pastor has run. I know <laughs> it's not over. He is inventive, creative, and passionate. That I know that God is not finished with Pastor Mbula. It's starting afresh, a new season of life, refreshing, creative, and inventive. Hebrews 12. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. It's not over. We are blessed. We get to run the race. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking a chance on a middle-aged, stay-at-home housewife who didn't have much experience. I hope that I can do you proud. I'm going to miss you around church, and thank you for everything you've done. Bye for now. Good morning, Pastor Courtney and Sister Beulah. It's Carmelita. She's in the house. I just wanted to take this time to say thank you. Thank you so much for being two of the most amazing people I have met and who have been in my life for the past 13 years. You have been so instrumental in me becoming the person I am today. Um, I want to thank you for being inclusive. I want to thank you for sharing your stories and encouraging others to do that, to spread the love of Jesus. I want to thank you and to everyone at Innisfil Community Church for all that you have done for me. Pastor Courtney, I know that you have held on for as long as you could. ICC will not be the same without you, but I hope that ICC will grow even more and be a light and a beacon and hope for Innisfil. I know that whatever it is you set your heart to, whatever it is that God has in store for you, Pastor Courtney, that you are going to take it on 100%. I have no doubt that I will still hear your name being called. And Bula, thank you. You... I'm going to say this in a Jamaican dialect, and then I'm going to say it in English, which basically means you are small, but you are strong. You amount to so much. Um, I am going to miss um, watching ICC on Sundays, and uh, Pastor Courtney will not be preaching or pretending he knows how to dance. God bless you. May your next endeavor be filled with God's richest blessings and peace and mercy. Love you both. Carmelita. Peace out. God bless. Bye-bye. Hi, we're Alan and Linda Smith. And Pastor Courtney is very special in our life because he married us around nine years ago. And uh, both he and uh, Beulah provided some guidance for our marriage. So it's very special. And we really appreciate you, Pastor Courtney. You've been a very wonderful, godly man of integrity and a very good shepherd to your flock and we really appreciate you. And we really want to thank you for giving us that deluxe wedding service because that's what you need folks. You need the deluxe Pentecostal deluxe. wedding service which right. is what we got. So that's it really works. Got. Works AM. Yeah. All the best. God bless. Hi Pastor and Beulah. It has been a pleasure getting to know you both came to this church um, around 2015. First I came to the Bible study and then I attended church following. I felt as accepted, hospitality was there and I decided to be part of ICC Church. I wish you joy. I wish you peace. I wish
wish you blessings in your new life, retirement. I'm also retired, but part partially <laughs> because I'm just as busy or sometimes even more busier than when I was employed. So nothing to fear, Pastor and Beulah. And I know you will be busy, you both. I wish you satisfaction in your work and in all of the things that would make your day-to-day -day life more balanced and content and rewarding. I wish you happiness in your family, for your family, unconditional love for each other. I, as I quote, he said in one service that you stated that you are her most favorite pastor. I say the same too. Eula is my favorite pastor right now. <laughs> I don't know what the future will be, but he's my favorite pastor too. And as Jeremiah 3.15 says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you knowledge and understanding. Thank you for your service, Pastor. And I hope you'll still be in the community with us for a long time because we enjoy your teachings. And I should have to cut this short. God bless you and your family. We love you, Pastor. God bless Wow, wow, wow. How did it ever happen? Mr. Courtney, I hear the great news that retirement is in its near future for you. You have served so well, and I pray God's blessing over you and Beulah. What beautiful examples of outreach, love Jesus leaders. God bless you. Keep you. Hi, I'm Caleb Courtney, the son of Pastor Howard Courtney. Uh, just in a few seconds to celebrate your retirement dad after 43 years of being the lead pastor of Innisfil Community Church. As a young child, I gave my life to Jesus at this church, and I, at 11 years old, I was baptized in water, and at 12 years old, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues, and uh, so many parts of my life journey uh, spiritually have been in Innisfil Church, and a lot of my time, too, leading worship uh, through the 90s and 2000s. Sunday school picnics and all kinds of things. Dad, I'm just so happy uh, that you've had an impact on the people that you've served, including me. going to do something a little old school right now that we haven't done in this church in a few years. We're going to take up an offering. We're going to ask the ushers to come forward, and we're going to take up a special offering. This isn't for the church. We are going to take up a love offering for Pastor Courtney and Beulah. It was the board's wishes that we wanted to be able to bless them financially, and we wanted to give you the opportunity that if you wanted to do that, you could do that. Now, some of you may be saying, I don't carry cash anymore. I just have debit cards. We take credit cards too. That's not a problem. And we can take it at the back at the debit machine. You can use that after service. If you would just earmark it love offering, then we will know how to direct that uh, to Pastor Courtney. Or also, if you want to e-transfer, you can do that at donate at innisfieldchurch.com. That's donate at innisfieldchurch.com. And just, again, earmark that. Put it in the message love offering for pastor. Let's pray. It is good to take up an offering, Lord. It is good to take up, but it has been a long time, Lord. And I know that is pleasing to you when we bless your house and we bless our pastors. And Lord, we want to bless Pastor Courtney and Pastor Beulah. And we want to thank them, not only with our words, but with our finances as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness on this church financially over 43 years. Have you have sustained it? 
for your good work and your good purpose. So, Lord, we know you're going to continue to do that in the future. And, Lord, may we just bless our pastor right now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. worship team. Well, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, Pastor Mark Quinlan. That's okay. Thanks. Mark was with us from 2008 till 2017. He started out as our youth pastor, moved his way up to assistant pastor. He's now the lead pastor at New Life Pentecostal in Brantford. Boo! <laughs> I hope they're not watching the live stream. Yeah, no, we, we love Mark, and we are so, so very blessed to have you here, and we feel like you've come home. Oh, yeah, so yeah. we're happy to have Erica and the three kids who are unrecognizable to us because they were like this when they left. So anyways... Please help me uh, make Mark feel welcome home. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Am I, am I on okay? There we go. It, 
this is surreal. It really is. I want to start off by just saying how much of an honor it is to be here this morning. Uh, I can't believe it's been five years, uh, and it's amazing how much changes in five years. There's so many familiar faces, so many incredible people, uh, and Erica and I want you to know uh, how much we love you uh, and how much you mean to us, and, uh, and just this is, this is a great moment in the history of this church, and we're honored to be here. Uh, I want to uh, just thank you for who you are. And so this morning, I've got a message for you, and I want to talk to you about how God's got you. How many of you know that God's got you? How many of you know it's always okay when God's got you? You can trust him in every season. You can trust him in every moment. How many of you remember COVID? You can trust God in every season. He cares about your situation. He cares and wants to make sure that his response for you is love and caring. He walks you through every single journey. And God's response will always be, I've got you. It's going to be okay. This is an incredible moment in Innisville's history. This is an incredible moment in Innisville as a church, but this is also an incredible moment in Innisville as a, a city. Because here's what you have to understand. Things have changed or will be changing in this season. And I need you to know that God's got you because he's got a purpose and plan for the future of Innisfil Community Church. How many of you know that? There's a verse in the Bible that I want you to listen to this morning, and it's Psalms 37. We've got it on the screen. It says this, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. How many of you are thankful for that? He delights in every detail of your lives. How many of you are thankful for that? Every detail. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. Now, here's the amazing thing about that. How many of you know we all got stuff? How many of you know you're all sinners saved by grace? If you're in here today and you're saying, well, I'm kind of perfect, you've come to the wrong church, because you're not. The amazing thing about God is those that, he, the, that live for the Lord, those that allow him in, your steps are ordered by him. He directs you. And even when you stumble, even when you make mistakes, even though you fall, he's got you. God has got you. You know, five years ago, my family left Innisfil and moved to Brantford. It was the biggest change we had ever experienced in our lives. In that experience, I need you to know that it was difficult. We were leaving a church family that we love, but knowing that God had called us to something different, and we were walking through some of the changes that were happening. It was going to be a new environment for us. There was going to be changes. There was going to be loss. We were going to lose certain things. And later we realized what God was doing in it. But we realized this as we walked through life. We also realized that there would be uncertainties, what it would be like for our kids, where they're going to go to school, and you know, what church life was going to be like. And one of Erica's concerns was we needed to find a hairdresser because she needed to get a haircut. As you could tell, I didn't have the same problem. So, but we found a good hairdresser. There was some stress. There were some moments. And I can still remember back because as I was thinking about today, I was thinking about the biggest change in my life. And now I'm thinking about the biggest change in your lives and what God is doing. And I'm reminded of a story. How many of you remember I used to tell stories about my family? <laughs> Guess what? I'm back. <laughs> there was a moment that I will never forget. We had bought our house, it needed some renovations. And so in those renovations, there was one thing left to do and I hadn't gotten to it yet. And if you've met my wife, patience is something we don't pray for because she doesn't have a lot of it and I don't want God to do that to her. So what happened was, she says to me, I want to change the handles. All the door knobs needed to be changed. She wanted to change them herself and I said, honey, when I come home tonight, I'll show you how to do it. It'll be fine. 
she said to me, I got this. God's got us, she's got the door handles. So here's what happens. I'm at the office and I get a phone call. Mark, she's whispering. I'm like, is everything okay? Mark, yeah, I need you to come home. Why are you whispering? I've locked myself in the closet. <laughs> what? Yeah, I was replacing the door handle and the door shut and I've locked myself in the linen closet. Okay, every husband in the room knows this was a bad idea, but I did it. I drove slower than I've ever driven <laughs> before. Like, I could not believe this. I pull up and I get to the door and, I, and we're on the phone the whole time. And I'm like, why won't you ask? We had a contractor in the... Still works. I'm feeling like that was a balloon. I said, there's a contractor in the basement. I'm like, why don't you call Paul? He'll come and help you. She's, he cannot know about this. So I walk in the door and I come up to the door and there's the little hole and I look in the hall. <laughs> hey, babe. You all right? And so... There was this moment where the look in her eyes meant, you better open this door or you're a dead man. <laughs> so I opened the door and I saved her life. <laughs> she could have starved to death that day, but I saved her life. And as I opened the door, we laughed. And here's what we realized. That moment, we were starting new memories because God had a purpose and plan. How many of you know that God's got memories for you in every season? It's an incredible moment that you're in right now. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to cry. It's okay for change because God's in the journey and he's got you. No matter what it looks like, he's got you and you'll make your own memories. And some of you may lock yourself in the closet. Those of you that will remember uh, Pastor, Pastor Lori Gibbons, he was the uh, superintendent of our district. I told him the story and he said, I've been telling everybody that Erica came out of the closet. That's a whole other problem. So, Psalms 37 says this, the, do the Lord directs the steps of the godly, amen. He delights in every detail of your life. Though you stumble, they will never fail, for the Lord holds on to your hand. This is a season that God's got you. Innisfil, I need you to know that this is an incredible moment as 43 years of just a legacy has been here. And I hope you're okay, but I'd like to talk to my pastor for a few minutes. I'd like to take a minute and just share with him how much he means to me. But before I do, I've got a slide of some photos just to kind of tell you what our working relationship was like, okay? So we put that on the screen if you can see it. Okay, so you're probably wondering, I've got a hammer and it's Pastor Courtney and we're standing beside a window. You might be wondering, what were we doing? Do you remember this? Wait for it. Give me the next slide. This icicle was right outside Pastor Jennifer's window. And it had grown to the point where you couldn't get your arms around it. That's how big this thing is, okay? And so we had decided that it needed to come down. Now, I remember being in the office that day and him talking about how it needed to be, get, we had to get it fixed, we got to get it fixed, we got to fix it. Finally, I hear him moving ladders. Anytime Pastor Courtney's moving a ladder, you know something fun is going to happen. <laughs> So I decided to get dressed, get ready, and the next slide, here it is. We're up on the roof. We came up with a solution. Now you need to understand, if Pastor Courtney comes up with a solution, you do not know how it's gonna go down. <laughs> I'm still standing on the roof. We've got the rope tied to his truck. I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look like a good idea. God's anointing is all over you. I have never seen anybody get hurt ever in these moments, but here's what happens. The next slide. We did it. We did it. 
It was one of those moments I will never forget. Beulah, thank you so much for helping me find these photos. You see the look on my face. It's a look of, uh-oh. Because when that thing came down, I felt the roof kind of buckle a little bit. And I knew that the Lord was with me. <laughs> Pastor, you are an incredible man. Your legacy is one of strength, one of courage, one of honor, one of caring, one of extreme hard work. I have never met anybody that works as hard as you and cares for a church the way you do. And I have tried my best to keep up. And I'm telling you, I've wor I think I do okay. But you know what it is to work hard and care. It's one of longevity. 43 years is something to be uh, honored. Um, and I've learned that. Over the nine years that I was here, I've watched how it, uh, longevity matters. It's important. You're steadfast. You're a builder. I mean, this church was just a, a bunch of dirt at one point, and you've built a great facility and multiple additions, but that's not the type of builder you are. Yes, you've done that, but you have built something in this community that nobody could ever take away from you. You have done an incredible job at building relationships with those in the city that will... You're just an incredible man, and I honor you in every single moment. You're a mentor. I could tell you story after story of the moments you've mentored me and the moments that I can never share because it's just between you and I. <laughs> you're a father, a father to two incredible boys, but you're also uh, a father to so many others. You're a grandfather to so many incredible grandkids, but you're also an incredible uh, grandfather to so many others. You're a friend, and today I honor you as pastor and always pastor. You're still pastor in my phone. That's how much you mean to me. For those of you that don't know, Pastor Courtney has had an incredible influence in this community. He has run the mayor's prayer breakfast for year after year. He's part of the Red Cross. You may or may not know this, but he has a CB radio in his office and in his truck. If something bad happens in the city, he knows about it, and he'll be the first on the scene. He will beat the fire department. I've seen him do it. <laughs> he cares about the community. He's given Bibles to those that were new to the ward when they got elected. I've seen you work hard to create the food bank. I still remember when it was the church closet, food closet. And I've seen what you've helped it grow into. If you break down on the side of the road, hear me, you do not want a tow truck. You want Pastor Courtney. He has more tools in his truck to save you than the tow truck driver. And he will be there and care for you. The hospital visits that I've watched you do and those that you've cared for that have passed away, you're an incredible man who cares about people. The list goes on and on and I could never say it all but that's who you are and that's the legacy that you've, you've left and led and kept. Beulah, you're an incredible person. You're such an encourager. You love, you care, your desire to serve. Like it's endless and my years here, I am so thankful for your leadership because I've been able to watch it and I'm the person I am today because of it. There's a joke that I always used to make when I was here, and I'm going to make it again. When you get to heaven, you need to know that Beulah's mansion is going to be bigger than yours. <laughs> you're going to drive by, and you're going to ask the question, who lives in that house? And I can guarantee you it'll be Beulah's. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Courtney and Beulah, I can't speak enough about how much I love you, but I need you to know that God is so thankful for you. I'm so sure that he is thankful for the service that you've done because you've led well and you continue to lead well. And I want you to know today what this verse that we've all been talking to is for you as well. The Lord directs the steps of, of the godly. He delights in every detail of your life, even this season. And you need to know that today. 
And so I'm so thankful for you, the way that you came alongside me, the way you took a risk on me. We both know that it was a bit of a risk. I hadn't had Bible college. There was a bunch of stuff that I hadn't done yet. And it was me. Like, there's risks involved <laughs> with me. But you took a risk on me, and part of your legacy is me. And I can't thank you enough. I'm where God wants me because you took a risk on me, and I'm just so thankful how you mentored me, how you've led, and I've been able to watch. I'm just, I'm just amazed, amazed at how godly of a man you are. I want you to know that 2 Corinthians 9, verse 13, is directed at you both. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God for your generosity to them and all the believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ and they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given you thank God for this gift the wonderful words of this gift pastor today it's because of your ministry because of the way you've led by the way you've done life that this is who you are. And we are all living in just understanding the glory of God because of you. And you've led so well. We are so thankful for you. Church family, I need you to know that there will be some changes that will come. I know there's going to be moments where you're thinking, well, what about Pastor Courtney? I need you to know that God's got you. He's got you because there's this season that you're going to walk through. And how many of you know that in every season God's in, it's a good season? You need to understand today that I've known about this process for a long time. I've known that the church was looking and maybe, you know, you need to know that I've been praying, asking God to be with the leadership team, the board, the search committee, that God would help you find the right person. And this one verse that had been running through my mind the whole time was Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. This is for you, church. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will be able to call upon the name of the Lord and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and you shall find me when you seek me with all of your heart. How many of you know that God knows the plans he has for you? And I need you to know that God's got great plans for Ennisville. God's got great things in store for the future. How many of you know that God's in the future? For the next few minutes, I want you to give me a minute so I can talk to my buddy Steve. You may not know this, but I've known Steve for over a decade. I knew Steve when he was a youth pastor in Aurelia. I've, we've done retreats together. We've done all-nighters together. We can't do them anymore. We're too old. It just hurts to think about we actually did a Bible college course together. We did. But here's what's really wild. The year that I left to go to Brantford was the year that, that Steve came to work for the Life 103. And I need you to look at this photo. This is what I came home to. I come back to, Branf uh, to Innisfil and I'm looking at my buddy Steve and his face is everywhere. Everywhere. And it, it's not that good looking. I love you, bro. But here's the thing. As I've done life with this man and as we've learned together and as we've done these things, I know that you have elected an incredible pastor. You have. I asked Steve what his vote was. Not that we were ever in competition with each other, but I had to know. He said to me, he got 95.5%. Bro, I know for sure that's the first A plus you've ever gotten. I know it. I know it. Don't worry. When I got voted in at 96, it was my first A plus too, bro. It's okay. It's okay. Steve. The few things that I know about you is that you love Jesus. You need to know today your pastor loves Jesus. He cares about community. He cares about the transformation power of the Holy Spirit. He loves and believes in the local church. 
And I know this. He is invested in the community. He is extremely creative, extremely creative. If there's a gift that I could steal from him, that would be the one. He's very creative. He's called by God. And he is fully relying on God, and I know that. Bro, we've had so many moments that I could share, and I won't because they're between you and I. But I know that God's got you. What you need to know is me and Steve, for over a decade, have talked at least once a week. This is my buddy. This is my friend. This is somebody that I trust, that I love. And over this process, my wife thinks, you know, we've been talking an awful lot, like maybe once a day. I'm so thankful for you, and I need you to know that I'm excited for what God's got in store for your family. Steve and Jenny, God has called you to this moment. And I've got a verse for you that I want you to understand that this verse is for you today to realize what God is calling you to. It's Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not, do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his ways in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Bro, this is a season that God's got you. This is a season that's going to be great for this church, for this community. And so as you lead the community, as you preach, as you are anointed to do this, God has placed you here for a purpose. And I could not be more excited for the future of Innisfil Community Church. I really can't. So church, Psalms 37 says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of your life. This message is for you as well. You may be walking in this moment and maybe you've been going through some struggles. I need you to know that God's got you. Those struggles that you may be facing, maybe health, financial, maybe it's relational, Maybe there's some things that you've been walking through situationally and you're going, how am I going to get through this? I need you to understand if you let God be the center of everything you do, he's got you because he says the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in the details of your life. God's got you. In this season that you're walking, he's got you. If you're wondering what tomorrow is going to bring, he's got you. If you're worried about society and the way things are going, you know, oftentimes I think of my family in this season and what the world looks like. I need you to know that I'm more and more convinced that God's got my family because he says our steps are ordered by him. He compare, care, cares about the details of my life. If you're worried about the people around you that they need to know Jesus, I need you to know that God cares about them as well. That God cares about the future. God cares about what he's doing in your life and those around you. I need you to know today that in this season, the best thing that you can do in this moment of your life is pray. How many of you know there's power in prayer? You want to move a, remove a problem in your life? Pray about it. You want to you get to a place where you can overcome? Pray about it. If you allow God to intervene in your situation, how many of you know he shows up and everything changes? That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. Your testimony matters. Do you know that your testimony is proof that God is active? The Bible says that the only way we overcome is by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. By the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. What does that mean? We know that because of Jesus Christ, everything has changed. We know his death and resurrection changed everything for us. But we also know that our testimony is proof that God is active. Today, your story is because God showed up. God had you and he still got you. So my prayer for you is this is that you would pray and ask God to be with you often. My prayer is that people's lives would be transformed in this house. My prayer is that the future is bright because of what God is doing in this church. 
I've believed for decades knowing that God was going to do something incredible in this church. And I still believe that God is continually to move because he's faithful to complete the work. Amen? And so I'm excited about the future. I'm excited to allow the Holy Spirit to do what God wants to do in this house. And I'm excited to see, Steve, I'm excited for you, man. You have no idea. I'm so pumped to see what God is going to do in the future of this church. And I'm believing for greater things in this house. If you're wondering, can, can, it, can this really turn around? Can my life really be okay? I need you to know exactly what this is, is that God's got you. Now, I want to end with a story. This story is for you, Steve. You got to listen to this one. This story is for the church. You got to listen to this one. And Pastor Courtney, this story is for you. You got to pay attention to this one, but it's also about you, okay? All right. When I was on staff here, I remember Pastor Courtney coming into my office and he says to me, Mark, I, there's a gentleman and he gives me the name. I, to this day, I can't remember the name. I wish I could, but we're gonna call him Bill just for fun, okay? He says, do you know this person? I said, no, I don't have no clue. He said, I got a phone call and the this, this, this son says that this man is in the hospital, but I don't know who he is. He said, so we, he did some research. He's trying to figure out who it was. He goes, hopefully when I get to the hospital, I'll recognize him, but I don't know who this is. Pastor Courtney comes back after the hospital visit and tells me the story. He says, you'll never believe it. I walked into this hospital room and I'm talking to this gentleman and he's talking like he knows me, but I don't recognize him. He says, it finally got to the place where I had to ask him the question. I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Where do I know you from? And this, hear me, will change your perspective on how you reach others if you listen to me this morning. Steve, this will change your perspective on how you sow seed if you hear me this morning. Pastor, this will change your perspective if you remember the story or not, but this will change your perspective as you continue to minister because ministers don't retire. We just do it differently. Here's the thing. The gentleman said to him, well, 25 years ago in the Stroud Plaza, you handed me a flyer and told me Jesus loves me. He said, the doctors are saying it's not going to be good, that my, the outcome is not good. Could you tell me a little more about that Jesus? This is why I honor you. This is why I love you, because you care so much about the gospel. He was able to pray with this gentleman, able to lead him to Jesus. Let me tell you something. You may say, well, I've got family members ain't serving Jesus right now. It's okay. Paul says in the Bible, he says, you know, Apollos and I, they go back and forth to who's greater. And he says, listen, I plant and Apollos waters. It doesn't matter. You need to know you just do your part and you'll see it come through. This is why longevity matters because I don't know what the outcome would have been. But 25 years later, you were able to lead someone to Jesus and I have never forgot that story because I realized that in every moment that I share the, my faith, in every moment that I tell somebody about Jesus, I don't know what the outcome's gonna be, but what I do know is that God's got it. How many of you are thankful that God's got it? So I'm gonna leave you with this verse one more time. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of your life. Though you stumble, you will not fall, for the Lord will hold on to your hand. I want to take a minute and pray. I want to pray for this church. I want to pray for your leadership. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will show up like never before, that lives will be transformed and changed, and that the future is so exciting. How many of you are excited about the future? Come on. God's got it. When I'm done praying, there's going to be a video on the screen. Let's pray. God, today I want to thank you for this morning. God, I want to thank you for this incredible church. God, I want to thank you for this incredible community. God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would resonate from every individual that's here and that, God, it would be shown in this community that lives would be changed, transformed, not by anything we did, but by the power of your Holy Spirit. 
God, I pray you would go with every individual. God, I want to thank you today for Pastor Courtney and Beulah. I want to thank you for their leadership. God, I want to honor them today. I pray that you would bless them in more ways than one. For God, for their faithfulness. God, I pray in this new season that, God, you would show Pastor Courtney what you've got plans for him. Because, God, we know he's not going to retire. He would never do that. He's, just, he's too busy. He works too hard. But, God, we know that you've got purpose and plan for him. So, God, we pray your blessing upon their family and their home. God, we also just pray for Pastor Steve today and Jenny and their family. God, I pray your anointing upon them as they take these next steps, as they prepare and they go forward. God, I pray you would give them guidance, wisdom, direction. God, I pray for the leadership of this church. I pray that they would hear your voice. They would chase after you and that, God, we would see incredible things happen, not because of us, but because of you. And so, God, we pray your blessing upon this church today. We pray your blessing upon the future of this church. And, God, today we just honor you. In Jesus' name we ask that you would transform our lives, make us more like you, so that the world would see the faithful God we serve. Amen. Amen. Faith makes us sure of what we've hoped for and gives us proof of what we cannot see. It was their faith that made our ancestors pleasing to God. Because of our faith, we know that the world was made at God's command. We also know that what can be seen was made out of what cannot be seen. You were saved by faith in God, who treats us much better than we deserve. This is God's gift to you, and not anything that you've done on your own. It isn't something you've earned, and so there's nothing that you can boast or brag about. God planned for us to do good things and to live as He's always wanted us to live. That's why He sent Christ, to make us what we are. Such a large crowd of witness is all around us. So we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that just won't let go. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, who leads us and makes our faith complete. He endured the shame of being nailed on the cross because he knew later on he would be glad he did it. Now he is seated at the right side of God's throne. You know that Many runners enter a race, but only one of them wins the prize. And so run to win. Athletes work hard to win a crown that cannot last, but we do it for a crown that will last forever. I don't run without a goal, and I don't box by beating my fists in the air. As Paul the Apostle said, I have fought well. I have finished the race. I have been faithful. And so a crown will be given to me for pleasing the Lord. I want to be like Paul as he was like Jesus. My name is Joel. I am the GTA Regional Director for the Western Ontario District. It is my absolute honor to be here today and uh, send greetings on behalf of our District Superintendent, Pastor Jason Small. And uh, we can sense the presence of Jesus here today. And I just pray that this moment is a spiritual moment. You have gone through a process that was clearly outlined. You have uh, posted, you have searched for a new lead pastor. Um, you have done it well. And you've done an election. You've had a vote that's in line with your constitution. But we are more than an organization. We are the body of Christ. And this is a spiritual process. And this is a spiritual moment. 
And so today, we want to celebrate and honor Pastor Howard and Beulah, but we also want to pass the baton. Pastor Steve and Jenny and their family. This is a spiritual moment that we're all going to be part of in this next few moments. Part of this morning's service is to officially bring closure to the ministry of Reverend Howard Courtney as the lead pastor of Innisville Community Church. The Bible teaches us many things. Some of those things are as follows. Among the ministering gifts given to the church is the important ministry of pastoring. And the scripture in Ephesians 4 says that actually God gives the church the gift of pastors. It is a high and it's a holy calling. It is a great responsibility. It is a wonderful privilege. It is a context within which a strong spiritual and emotional bond between a lead pastor and his spouse with the people that they serve. And the last 24 hours has been filled and charged with that emotion. As I was there last night, you can see I mean, I, I've never seen, I've been in a lot of these ceremonies, I've never seen a mayor actually get emotional when speaking about a pastor in their community. There has been an emotional connection here between pastor and people. As the lead pastor of Innisville Community Church, it has been your duty, Pastor Howard, to pray, <laughs> to study the scriptures, to preach the Word of God, to equip the saints, to faithfully perform the responsibilities required of a minister, to glorify Christ in your life and ministry. And as the lead pastor of this congregation for 43 years, you have celebrated the Lord's Supper who knows how many times. You have baptized believers. You've dedicated children. You've officiated at marriages. You've carried on the burial of the dead. You've shared their joy. You've shared with them in sorrow. And you've been granted a sacred trust. And the manner in which you have executed your office, your office, and I say this to you and Beulah, and I say it at the bottom of my heart, the way and the manner in which you have executed your office has altered history and impacted the kingdom of God and this world. And today, I desire us to express our thanks to Pastor Howard and Beulah Courtney. You have given and the people have received but I have a hunch that the people have given and you have received it is my prayer that the memory of your journey with this congregation will bring you much happiness and a personal sense of fulfillment today. this chapter of your life is now coming to a conclusion and a new chapter both for you and for this congregation, is about to begin. Pastor Howard, as you are released from your responsibility as the lead pastor of Innisville Community Church, please respond to the following statements. Do you believe, Pastor Howard, that God has revealed to you that your ministry here as lead pastor has come to a close? If so, will you answer, I do? Do you believe that you are in the will of God at this time? If so, will you answer, I do? I do. Is it your intention to respect and support the future leadership of this church 
and in no way interfere with the fellowship once you leave this office? If so, will you answer, I do? You're adding to the script, Pastor Howard. <laughs> Something that you kind of always do. I visit Pastor Howard, and those visits are so great. I, I mean them with lists of questions for me prepared in advance. I want to speak a few words to the board here today. As leaders, it has been your responsibility to attend to the affairs of this congregation. Now, I understand you're now the present elected board, and I'm sure there have been many others along the 43 years who have served tremendously well. In your service, it has been your duty to make it possible for the lead pastor to give himself more fully to the ministry of the Word and to prayer, to care for his temporal needs and that of his family, to be servants of God and the people, to fulfill the scriptural qualifications of a deacon. With the lead pastor, you have been granted a sacred trust, and the manner in which you have executed your office has likewise affected history and impacted the kingdom of God and the world. And I know, because I've been in a lot of board meetings and a lot of churches, that you spend countless hours doing the work of God in partnership with your pastor, all over and above your busy schedules as you work and take care of your own families and then late at night come to church for meetings that go sometimes into the wee hours of the morning. To you, I say, and congregation, I think you will agree, thank you. A few words to the congregation and members of Innisville Community Church. You see, as members of this congregation, you have been placed under the care of this lead pastor for many years, and it has been your responsibility to regard him as the under-shepherd of your souls, to esteem him, to pray for him, to covenant together with him in extending the gospel to this community and the whole world, to help care for him. And today... I just want you to know, just by discerning the room in the last 24 hours, you have done that exceptionally well. And today we say thank you to you, the members and congregants of Innisville Community Church. You matter. We're in this together. You see, the relationship between pastor and board is really critical. Relationship between pastor, board, and congregation, and congregation with pastor and board. Again, really critical. You have done this incredibly well in this Ville Community Church. And may you be blessed by it. As you have journeyed together, some of you have become Christians. Some of you have been baptized. Some of you have been nurtured. Others have been supported in times of crisis. You too will have your memories, congregation. However, today... You must release your lead pastor, Pastor Howard and Beulah, from his charge over your soul. You must release him. You must affirm, as he's affirmed, that his time as lead pastor has come to an end and a new chapter has begun. And there's a spiritual moment right here where I'm going to ask you, the congregation, to release your pastor from his duty. This is a spiritual moment. I'm going to ask you to say these words. Now we release you. Are you ready? Just one moment. Now we release you. Ready? One, two, three. Congregation. As members of this congregation, I remind you that the best compliment you can give Pastor Howard and Beulah is to continue to be faithful to the Lord and His church. I ask that you continue to labor for the ongoing vision of this assembly, that you be in prayer for Pastor Steve and Jenny and their kids, that you transfer your deep love and support to Pastor Steve and his family. 
Pastor Howard, upon the authority invested in me as the regional director of the Western Ontario District of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, I now release you from the office of lead pastor of Innisville Community Church charging you to be diligent and faithful unto the Lord in your new season of service unto Christ. May the blessing of the Lord rest upon you now until Jesus comes. Jesus, right now we pray for this amazing couple. Lord, thank you for the example they have been to so many. Thank you for their leadership. Thank you for the example they have been to our pastors of what longevity looks like, about what it looks like to love not only a church but an entire community. Lord, we honor them and we pray that you would bless them. Lord, in those moments where perhaps they feel um, different because of the scheduling change, I pray right now as I woke up this morning, I heard these words for them, you are my kids. The Father says from heaven, whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. Lord, today may they sense the validation of the Father in heaven, not only for what they have accomplished, but what they will accomplish in the days ahead. You're my kids. I love you. With you I am well pleased. We commit them to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Now, as part of this morning, not only are we releasing the Courtney's from their role as lead pastor, but we are about to commission Pastor Steve and Jenny Bradley as the lead pastors of Innisville Community Church. Friends, Ephesians chapter 4 says this, so Christ himself actually gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And so part of this morning's gathering is to officially induct Pastor Steve Bradley as the lead pastor of Innisville Community Church. And as we read God's Word, among the ministering gifts given to the church by our risen Lord and Savior is the important ministry of pastoring. It is a high and holy calling, and it carries with it great responsibility. It is the duty of every lead pastor to diligently engage in both public and private prayer and to earnestly study God's Word and that might reverently order the service of God's house according to the New Testament pattern. He is also to preach the Word of God and to perform faithfully the responsibilities required of the minister of the gospel, of the gospel, namely the celebration of the Lord's Supper, the baptism of believers, the dedication of children, the performing of marriages, the burial of the dead, and such other obligation and responsibilities as may be required of him. So, Pastor Steve, are you now prepared to officially assume the office of the lead pastor of Innisville Community Church and faithfully serve this congregation? If so, will you answer, I am? Do you believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God and the only authentic and reliable foundation of faith and practice? If so, will you answer, I do? Do you solemnly declare that you will be true to the Word of God in your preaching, in the conducting of the church's affairs, and in your own personal life? If so, will you answer, I do? Do you believe that you are in the will of God at this particular time and that you have been called and chosen of God to serve this congregation? If so, will you answer, I do? Jenny, you just found out that you're going to have to answer some questions moments ago. That was Steve's job. The work of the lead pastor is strengthened and encouraged by the faithful support of a true and loving spouse. Are you, Jenny, prepared to stand side by side with 
Pastor Steve, in the discharging of his duties? If so, will you answer, I am? Will you encourage and support him with your prayers and assist him to fulfill his obligation in this Ville Community Church? If so, will you answer, I will? Will you commit yourself to faithfully serve the Lord and endeavor to model Christ in your life? If so, will you answer, I will? To the church board, I, just a, a few last comments and promises for you. Do you accept the charge to be true to your calling and to seek to fulfill the scriptural qualifications of a deacon? If, if so, will you answer, we do? Under the direction of Pastor Steve, will you attempt to assist him so that he may be able to give himself more fully to the ministry of the Word and to the ministry of prayer? If so, you may answer, we will. Do you offer yourselves with the lead pastor to attend to the affairs of this local church in a manner that maintains its reputation in the community? If so, will you answer, we do. Do you also commit yourselves to provide and care for the comfort and needs of your pastor's family? If so, you may answer, we do. And finally... Do you acknowledge the responsibility of this office to which you have been chosen and do you affirm your love for Christ and for this congregation whose oversight you have? If so, you may answer, we do. Thank you. To the congregation, we charge you to regard this couple, this man of God as the under-shepherd of your souls and to recognize that he labors as one who must one day give an account to God. Be ready and diligent to hear the Word of God every week. Be doers of the Word and not just hearers only. Remember that we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the life that we lived. As members of Innisfil Community Church, you are to love and esteem your lead pastor and cease not to pray for him as the under-shepherd of this congregation. So as members of this congregation, do you solemnly covenant together to work with your lead pastor in extending the gospel in its purity and in its power to this community and to the whole world? If so, congregation, will you answer, we do? Pastor Steve, Jenny, now upon the command and order of God and upon the sanction of the Western Ontario District of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, we officially commission you, Pastor Steve Bradley, to the office of lead pastor of Innisville Community Church and charge you to be diligent and faithful unto the Lord in as much as you too shall one day give an account to Christ. May the blessing of the Lord rest upon you now and until Jesus comes. We want to pray. And maybe as a board members and Pastor Howard and Beulah and congregation, would you stand? And if you're comfortable to extend your hand towards the Bradleys today, let's pray for God's touch and anointing over their lives in this sacred moment in their lives and in the history of Innisfil Community Church. God, right now, we thank you for Pastor Steve. We thank you for Jenny. We thank you for their kids. We thank you for their family. We thank you for the call of God upon their lives. Lord, I have seen it. It is evident and clear that your will is being unraveled right here, right now, today at Innisfil Community Church. And so, Lord, we pray your anointing upon their lives. We pray your protection. We pray your provision. And, Lord, we pray that your power would be released upon their lives, that they would not just come, that Pastor Steve, as he stands and preaches the Word of God on a weekly basis, that it would not just be with wise and persuasive words, but that there would be a demonstration of the Spirit's power that is released through his ministry that countless people would find Jesus because of the ministry of this amazing family. God, I pray you would use them in ways they would have never thought or imagined. And Lord, I pray that your anointing would be upon them from the top of their head to the bottom of, your feet, of their feet. And I give you this charge, Steve. 
Preach the word in season and out of season to correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and, and, and careful instruction. And so now, Lord, we commission them. And I pray that this relationship between pastor and board would be amazing, that it would be healthy, that it will be strong, that relationship between founding pastor and present pastor would be amazing, that it would be pleasing to you. And Lord, I pray the relationship between a new pastor and a congregation would be off the charts, that it would be an example to other churches of how it's supposed to look like. And Lord, may this church and its relationship with its community go even further, that they would advance even further. Lord, I pray that this church would go into multiple Multiple services in the very near future. I pray that hundreds, thousands of people would find Jesus here, that the baptisms of, of wa the water baptisms would happen every week, Lord, because people are finding Jesus. And so, Lord, we commission the Bradleys today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and everyone says today, Amen. 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 Love you, brother. Yeah, you may be seated. You don't want me to ask you to say anything? Sure. <laughs> um, I do want just to take a moment, um, <clears throat> and I want to um, acknowledge a f just a few people that are in the house today um, on this special, special day for us here at Innisfil Community Church. I want to welcome our uh, Deputy Chief of Police, Deputy John Van Dyke, in the house this morning. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Just stand up so everybody can see it. They, know, they didn't know they're under surveillance in that area. <laughs> awesome. And it's a delight to have with us as well our Eastern Ontario District Superintendent for the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, Jason Luscombe. Yes. And we are so honored to have a lot of our family here today. Um, our four children, my siblings, my brother John from Winnipeg flew in yesterday, day before. These are some of my mentors in my life, my family. John, Ruth, Joe, stand up, will you please? You think I'm crazy? They're worse. And, uh, and our other family members, Sherry, along with Guido, Jason, Colleen, Caleb, where they? Caleb and Stephanie, and Gideon and Rachel. Just stand for a minute. Yeah. And I would be in big trouble if I didn't say something about our grandchildren here and our great great grandchild. That's able to be. You're great, great, great. great. You're great. They're all great, but they're just great great grandchildren. <laughs> She's in the nursery. Um, and Pastor Mark. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing. That was a masterful message you shared today. You've done so well since you left here. <laughs> I 
It's just so great to have you here and share today. Um, and certainly for our Western Ontario District Representative Joel for being here and coordinating this ceremony today. Thank you so much for doing that for us today, Joel. Mm -hmm. And over the years, having such great board members and uh, the current board who's walked this journey, and uh, we did have some long nights together. And, uh, you know, when we first began this process, it was probably almost two years ago, and, you know, you go and you go and you think nothing's happening, and you're sitting there thinking, well, you know, let's get this thing on the road, nothing's happening. He said, well, just be patient. God will bring the right person at the right time, and we'll know that. And we went through the due process and all the interviewing and stuff, and, and yes, God brought to us the very man of God for this next season. And Pastor Steve and Jenny, we are so, so delighted that you have allowed yourself, made yourself available to this church to serve the Lord in this area of the mission field. Um, I, there, there's, um, there's just such a sense, number one, of relief <laughs> that I don't have to do it any longer. And a lot of people didn't understand this, but once that came in place, there was a, a burden of responsibility that rolled off my shoulders that felt really good. And uh, I loved what I did in serving in this church as pastor. But when, when it came to the place where we knew this was God's plan, it was just such a release for me. And I just felt, yes, this is the hand of God. And as you've witnessed this morning, it would be really wrong for you to treat him any different than you treated me. He needs your respect and your support and your encouragement. And if you do as much encouragement and, and, and blessing to him as you've done to me, he will be a very blessed pastor, and you will see great things accomplished together. And so thank you, Steve and Jenny. Now, we, we didn't practice this part, but there needs to be a photo op here. Uh, so, Pastor Steve, <clears throat> this is the service where we call it the passing of the baton, but we haven't been doing much running lately, <laughs> <All> right? <clears throat> so, <laughs> so <clears throat> I don't know how we practice this to get this right. I don't know. But I did watch a few videos last night. <clears throat> and they, <clears throat> they have a, a, a couple of ways of passing batons in races, and and uh, so you run 10 times this way. No, 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 no. Um, <clears throat> you have to, as the uh, receiving runner, you have to be facing the other way and running, okay? And when it's time, when the person behind you, which is going to be me, so trust me I, when I'm coming. <clears throat> so I'm coming from behind. We're going to pass the baton. But I, I think what's supposed to happen is the runner coming up gets close enough, and he says, hit. And when I say hit, your hand's supposed to go back like this and hold it out so I can give you the baton. Right. Do you think we can do this? Think do, do you have a baton? I got a microphone. <laughs> I just happen to have one in my pocket. <laughs> Are you ready? Now, just imagine, we're going about 30 kilometers an hour here. <laughs> Are you ready? Hit! Ow! <laughs> See? It takes a little practice. Are you ready? I hope I don't drop it. <laughs> it's okay. It's even legal in a race. If you drop it, you can still pick it up and run. Yeah. Now, what I... What I what I, what, I, what I understood was part of it was that the guy in the front is not looking back to the past. Like the past is past, right? It's important for us to know that. We've had a great past, but that's the past race. We're looking the other way, all right? So this is the blind, what they call the blind pass. He just receives it, 
and I'm going to sit back and watch you run. <laughs> For 43 years. <laughs> 43 and a half. If I get the 43 yes, and a half, right. I got to beat you. Yeah, you, you got to beat that 96%. I'm, I'm pretty competitive. <laughs> All right, we're running. All right, are you ready? Go. Hit. I just wanted to announce that we do have a lot of food out into the lobby if you would care to join us for a couple of small things. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. <laughs>